Hey guys, Strike here with another episode of Redstone Quickies. Today, I'm really excited. I'm going to show you how to build an I squared C bus. Um, basically, it is a, a single two-wire bus that allows multiple devices to be connected. Um, so, for example, these uh, blue columns will only talk to each other. The green will only talk to each other, and the red will only talk to each other. Same with the yellow. Um, the uh, iron block on top indicates it's a transmitter and the gold block indicates it's a receiver so as you can see we've got you know red going from one end to the other um, yellow going this way blue going this way green going this way so it's all mix and matched and the idea is to have um, a single bus line say um, connecting multiple islands together in your world something like that and um, be able to fire off or receive sensors and devices from anywhere um, with not very much redstone. So I'm going to go ahead and activate the first device which is just a basic clock and that's going to make the green receiver just play a note and uh, blink a light. Now since it is on a clock um, I'm going to leave it running the whole time just so we can show kind of the stability of the system. Um, it isn't perfect yet. There are still occasional issues with crosstalk and uh, bus contention, uh, which are kind of one and the same thing. But for the most part, it's very usable, um, and I do plan on perfecting it even more in the future. So, anyway, we've got um, that just pulsing away. Um, over here, I'm going to start off a chain reaction. So when I hit the button, it's going to cause this TNT to explode. That's going to knock out this redstone torch, which is going to send a signal to the blue column and pop out a villager. I think I got a villager egg in there. Yes, I do. All right. So uh, yeah, and that light's going to keep blinking away. So let's go ahead and fire this off. and there's our villager okay uh, and as a final test yeah and our light is still blinking over here uh, on occasion here um, last test we're gonna send a signal all the way from this end to the other end that'll be the grand finale before I show you guys how to make this All right. Back to the drawing board, and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so if you're familiar with electronics, you might have heard of I squared C before. If not, well, it's a real protocol developed by Philips in the 1980s for their TV sets. It's still used today for low speed data transfer, and as one example, you're using it right now. Your computer motherboard uses I squared C to query temperature sensors at your CPU and RAM, and to control the speed of fans. The reason it's so popular is because it uses only two wires to communicate with several, potentially hundreds, of individual devices. So let's say you have two islands. To send a signal from one to the other might cost you one stack of redstone. To send multiple signals, the size and costs increase. Now the real protocol is digital, but to implement it into Minecraft would take a huge number of logic gates, so it's completely opposite of what we're trying to achieve. So we're going to deviate from the standard a bit. And but keep the primary concept of I squared C device addresses. The idea is to assign an address or ID number to each of our contraptions and send that ID down the bus whenever we want to activate that particular device. Again, using logic gates to encode binary pulses would be a huge waste of time, space, and resources. So what we do instead is encode the ID as a delay. Each transmitter will power the bus for a precise amount of time, its ID. Any receiver that is tuned for that amount of time will get the signal. All other receivers will filter it out and ignore it. When we activate a transmitter, it first needs to check the bus and make sure nothing else is active. If it blindly starts powering its ID out at the same time as another transmitter, we have what's called bus contention. And most likely, neither of the receivers will get the signal, and we might even trigger another device completely, which is called crosstalk. So when the transmitter is activated, we first filter the input to a single pulse for stability. This pulse flips on a latch. 
The latch feeds into a NOR gate along with an input from the bus. When the latch is on and the bus is idle, the NOR gate will flip the latch back off and simultaneously activate a signal extender to power the bus for a specific amount of time, which is our ID. All the receiver needs to do is measure how long the bus is powered and compare it to the ID it expects. To do this, we pass the bus signal through a few repeaters that represent the ID we want, and then into a rising edge detector. We also pass the unaltered bus signal to a falling edge detector. The outputs of these edge detectors are simply anded together to get our ID filtered output. Before I show you how to build this in the game, I'll give you the formula for calculating the delays from an ID. On the transmitter, the extender is built of several dual repeater units, and the number of units is simply the ID. For the receiver, the delay is specified in redstone torch ticks, and the formula is as follows. Ticks equals 3 plus the ID number times 2. So in other words, ID 1 needs 5 ticks, 2 needs 7 ticks, 3, 9, etc. Just keep adding 2. Alright, it's time to actually build a couple. Alright guys, so the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, create your bus. Now the only difference on the top layer is the repeaters will be facing the other direction. Alright, let me knock out my torches here. Alright, so first we're going to create a transmitter for ID 1. Um, first we're going to do the right head, which is going to be two blocks with a uh, repeater facing into here. That's going to power both the top and the bottom lines. Next we're going to do the reed head, which is going to be one piece of dust, two blocks in diagonal fashion, and then dust coming down, and one repeater here. So that will pick up regardless if it's the top or the bottom. Now on the left side we're going to put our transmitter, which is going to be uh, an extender ID 1. So it's two repeaters, inputs and outputs connected together. Left side set to 4, right side set to 2. Then we're going to construct our NOR gate. Repeater going in, repeater going out, and then our latch. And finally, our input filter, which is just a rising edge detector. And a button. Let's go ahead and test it. Okay, and let's say down here we're going to make our ID2 transmitter. And I'll just build that real quick. And this time we're going to use uh, two sets of dual repeaters. Inputs and outputs all connected together. Left side set to 4. Right side set to 2. Alright, let's go ahead and test it out. Okay, and let's put the um, ID1 receiver maybe, I don't know, down here. For the receiver, we only need an, a reed head constructed in the same fashion as before. Um, now, off to the right side, we're going to create a uh, falling edge detector. So repeater set on two, a couple blocks. We're going to need um, an extra block right here to cut that off so it'll make a clock. And off the other side, we're going to need for ID1 a delay of three plus one times two, which is five. So one repeater set on four plus one repeater. And then we'll make a rising edge detector, again like the others, repeater set to four, two blocks, torch, dust, torch. Now these need to go into an AND gate, um, but first we're going to have to invert the signals. Then feed that into a NAND gate. And 
and that is our output. We'll rig that to TNT. That's our ID1 receiver. And then let's say down here, we'll make our ID2 receiver. For an ID2, we're going to need a delay of 7. So 4 plus 3. Alright, all done. So let's go ahead and test out um, ID2, I suppose, which should fire off uh, that TNT right here, actually. I'll go ahead and reconstruct that. Okay. And if we hit the button for ID1, then that TNT should explode. And of course, again, if we hit ID2, then that TNT should explode. Alright, and that's it.